Lannister 2.0 since the very beginning. Jaime Lannister just took care of business at High Garden, but his victory march is about to be short-lived once Daenerys Targaryen and her Dothraki savages catch them by surprise in the open field. But the Lannisters have a brand new alliance, with the greatest military commander left in his series, Lord Randall Tarly. But even with his expertise, it will not be enough to stop the wrath of Daenerys Targaryen. Jaime Lannister and his men just sacked the shit out of High Garden and are now making their way back with plenty of the Tyrell's valuable resources. But before that money is spent, or all of that food is divided up, the Lannister army will be delivered a devastating blow by one of Robert Baratheon's biggest fears, which was meeting the Dothraki out in the open field. The spoils of war is reported to be on par with the Battle of the Bastards. They hired hundreds and hundreds of extras, and over a hundred horses to be used for this epic battle against the Lannisters and the Targaryens and more bodies were burnt in this upcoming episode than every other episode combined. We can expect to see over 75 people get burned alive by Daenerys' dragons during this ambush. This battle should take up about half of the episode, and with everything that's going to happen, I don't think anyone is going to be disappointed by it. But the Lannisters aren't about to go down without a fight. And the Tarleys aren't about to go down without a fight either, especially when you have one of the greatest battle commanders of all time at the helm. But before this episode ends, Nearly every Lannister and Tarly soldier will be dead, except for Jaime and Bronn, of course. Remember Kyburn's brand new weapon that he showed to Cersei? We will see the dragon slaying crossbow put into action during this battle. Not only will we see this gigantic crossbow get used, but it will injure the dragon, which will give Jaime Lannister the opportunity to make one mad dash at it to put it out of its misery. In the Season 7 trailer, we can see Jaime Lannister charging on his horse like a bat out of hell across the burning battlefield and I believe he is charging at Daenerys and her dragon. Jaime will see that he has a chance to kill it, and he will do everything in his power to put it down for good. But at the last moment, I think the dragon will turn its head right at Jaime and breathe its fire right at him, and nearly kill him. But Jaime will be saved just in time by Bronn. But let me explain how this is going to happen. There is another scene from the Season 7 trailer that shows someone diving into some water, and fire shoots out above. I believe that is Jaime Lannister getting tackled or pushed into some water by Bronn, right before the dragon completely ignites his one-handed ass in flames. When the trailer came out, everyone said this is Theon jumping into some water, which wasn't a bad guess, but I made a video and I provided a good bit of solid evidence that I thought that proved this was going to be Jaime and Bronn during the Field of Fire. But let's take a closer look at this clip one last time before Episode 4 airs. Right before this person goes into the water, if you look out above it, you can see what I think is sunlight shining through the water. Some people told me it was moonlight shining through, but I think that's sunlight. We already saw Theon jump into the water at night, and they never showed him jumping into the water from this angle. As we can see from the preview footage, this battle against the Lannisters and the Thraki will take place during the daytime, which is why I think that's sunlight coming through. And I think that's Dragonfire shooting across the water that just misses Jaime and Bronn. If you slow it down and look closely, you can see that that fire shoots across the water in a straight line, the same way Drogon's fire shoots out in a straight line, just like we've seen him do before. This is going to be a pretty badass scene. When I saw Jaime charging across the burning battlefield, I got so excited to finally see Jaime take charge and put his fighting skills to good use, other than fighting Ned and Brienne. Jaime looks like an absolute madman charging at Daenerys and her dragon. And this takes a lot of balls when you know once that dragon sets its eyes on you, it's a wrap. And Jaime would get cooked alive inside of that armor if it wasn't for Bronn who's going to be here to save him just in time. I've been looking forward to the spoils of war ever since I first caught wind of how much the budget they were going to be spending on this episode. And more specifically, this battle sequence. This is going to be an absolute bloodbath. You have to keep in mind how pissed Daenerys Targaryen is right now. She just lost all of her major alliances that she arrived in Westeros with, and we are only halfway through the season. Daenerys was expecting to conquer Westeros and get everyone to kneel fairly quickly, but things have not went as planned. She showed up with this massive army and massive fleet that has started to dwindle away pretty damn fast. She lost her Greyjoy fleet almost as soon as she arrived. The Sand Snakes were just completely removed from the game, and they were going to provide the Dornish soldiers to help lay siege to King's Landing. Then the Tyrells are now out of the equation as well, and they were supposed to lay siege to King's Landing with the Dornish also. So that plan has now went to shit, and she lost her Greyjoy alliance as well. 
Not only is Yara locked up in King's Landing right now, but Theon isn't much help at all on his own, and with no more ships to provide, he has nothing at all that he could bring to the table for the next strategy. Daenerys has lost three major alliances, and the only thing she has to show for it is Casterly Rock. And Casterly Rock only had a small amount of Lannister men there, so she didn't even hurt the Lannisters that much by taking it at this moment. And on the other hand, Cersei now has two new alliances that are very formidable in battles. We saw what Euron Greyjoy is capable of, and Randall Tarly's career speaks for itself. As of right now, the Lannisters are winning, and they have an anti-dragon weapon just waiting to be used. Cersei Lannister is also going to end up with the Iron Bank supplying her with the funds to strengthen her forces. Daenerys Targaryen is actually getting her ass kicked right now. So when she ambushes the Lannisters in the open field in the next episode, this is a must win for Daenerys. She has got to win this battle. She cannot afford to lose all of her Dothraki men either. But even with all that being said, Daenerys still has the greatest threat Westeros has ever known to worry about she still has to help defeat the Night King. Everyone in Westeros needs to wake up and realize they can't afford to lose all their best soldiers fighting each other, or else when the Night King comes, they will have no one strong enough left to beat them back and beat them into submission. I think things are getting pretty damn interesting now. Daenerys is going to need to find a way to take care of the Lannisters swiftly, without losing much else in the process. The Spoils of War is a big episode smacked right dab in the middle of the season, which goes to show just how epic this season could end up being. Typically, a battle of this size would be at the end of a season. Since this is in Episode 4, that means whatever they have in store for us in Episode 6 and 7 has to be something amazing. With Casterly Rock and High Garden now being taken, the pace of the show is going to pick up even more from here on out. The struggle for who has control of the Seven Kingdoms is underway, and Daenerys is feeling the power shift. It seemed as if Daenerys was going to be an unstoppable force, but Cersei has shown us once again that she is more resilient than given credit. And the only way Daenerys will ever get full control of the Seven Kingdoms is if she can deliver a knockout blow to the crown that Cersei continues to wear, and it is about to shift gears in the next episode. Jaime Lannister is also proving to be very useful, even with only one good hand. And when he sees the dragon in a vulnerable position, He's going to have the taste of victory right on the tips of his golden fingers once again. But coming face to face with the dragon's fire is going to humble his ass real quick. But it's going to be interesting to see how the Lannisters make their adjustments after this. This may give Jaime the insight to what he can do next time to take a dragon down for good. And really turn the tide against Daenerys Targaryen. I can't wait to see how the rest of this season plays out. Things are really starting to heat up now, literally and figuratively. But comment down below with your questions and thoughts. Let me know what you thought about episode 3. And let me know what you think's going to happen in episode 4. Do you think that's Jaime Lannister avoiding the dragon fire in the clip above? Or do you still think that's Theon or somebody else? Let me know down below. I'm going to work on my breakdown for episode 3 right now. And I'm going to have that video up within the next 15 hours of you listening to this one. I just want to say thanks for stopping by the channel and checking out this video. Make sure you come back all week long because I'm going to be releasing videos every single day. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters also for always showing love. It really means a lot to me, so have a good night, and I'll see you for the Episode 3 Breakdown. Bye.